So I will just start. I don't know. Nobody needs to know. So, uh, very pleased to have <laughs> Mohammed here. Thank you. Very pleased to be here as well. Um, so yeah, so I will talk about uh, similar SOC fibers and immersive branches. So um, in the previous talk, we saw about how you can think about mirror symmetry in dimension one by taking um, basically tori, one-dimensional tori to circles, and uh, Seidel's uh, immersed Lagrangian, which is well, an immersed circle, on a pair of pens, and kind of gluing together those mirrors to get th those uh, Fukai categories, Fukai categories supported on those things to get the mirror. So what I want to do is do the same thing in higher dimensions. So first let me point out, uh, and then, Okay, so one thing we want to do is we will only be thinking about the Claudio case. And in the Claudio case, this, um, what we saw in the previous thing doesn't really show up. Those examples that we're talking about are not really Claudia. They don't have the correct, uh, I mean, they, are, they do have the holomorphic volume forms, but at infinity, the poles are not of the right order. Um, so instead, if you did it in dimension one, you really would only have circles. So if you do this in dimension two, We know that there's two local models. So one is the thing that we all know, which is T star squared, okay, which you maybe want to think about. I'm going to try to do everything algebraically with T star T2. Okay. Um, and then the other one is C2 minus the locus where um, x1 times x2 equals 1. Okay. And what you want to do is you want to think of this as T star of this guy, where this guy means an immerse S2 with one double point. Actually, there's two different immerse, there's two ways to immerse S2 with one double point uh, having to do with some kind of sign living there, but anyway, the, I mean the one which gives you this. So um, just to be clear, I want to explain, for people who haven't seen this before, to explain why this is true. So to see this, we take a projection from C2 to the x1, x2 to C. And my space, let's call this space x2 for now. Uh, my space x2 is the complement of 1, of the inverse image of 1. So you can draw it like this. So here's 0 which is the singular fiber, and then here's one. And now the general fiber, oh yeah, one which looks like zero, <laughs> sorry. This is the missing point. Point, and this is the singular point. Uh, so the general fiber is just a copy of C star. And uh, so now we want to use this picture to produce some Lagrangians. And uh, I think this you know, basically is part of the long story. It's a paper of mine and Dunyo Wu and Ludmik Katsakov. I mean, maybe versions of this appeared in some earlier papers of Wu. I don't remember. I remember a lot of Katsakov. So what you do is the following thing. Uh, oh, first, let me talk about this immersed Lagrangian here. So to produce this immersed Lagrangian, you just say there is a vanishing the fiber, the special fiber. There's just two copies of C, basically the coordinate axes. So there is that that's a point right there. If you take any path that kind of goes into that point, there will be a single circle that collapses to that point. That's the vanishing, the vanishing cycle. It looks like this here. Okay. And then what you can do is you can go around and do that. So if you think about the geometry of the situation, this is a Lagrangian S2, and the reason it's a Lagrangian S2 is here is a disk, and here is another disk, and they're of course meet together along the circle, so that's an S2, but of course here they also meet, so which is inverse. So, good. Um, questions? No questions. So, we want to understand the mirror of the space, and we particularly want to understand that the mirror of the space is itself. So claim, one then claim in some sense, x2 is self-mirror. So there are three proofs. So there's the easy proof. Uh, 
which is which used which is due to Seidel, when written up by Seidel maybe in like 2013, um, uh, which uses the Bradford County categories. And basically, all you do is you identify a Lagrangian which generates this category, and it's this. Okay, you look at this cotangent. You look at the R, uh, f fiber of this of the cylinder, um, and then you move it along this arc from from the puncture to plus infinity. So the Radford category is generated by a single Lagrangian. And then the morphism algebra uh, given by the ring of function, exactly. Uh, the ring of function that we're talking about, C x1, x2, mod the relation um, in, which you, uh, in which you invert. Sorry, you shouldn't do it. So this is not a hard thing to compute in this case. So um, there is a medium difficulty proof. Which I think still has not appeared. It's due to um, uh, uh, Eckholm and Tonkanov, I think. Although actually, I'll, I'll put Seidel's name as well. Seidel. They reformulate uh, and then they're called Tonkin. Not in the spirit of what um, Cho was talking about. So what you want to do is you want to find three exact Lagrangians um, which um, so which kind of whose space of bounding cochains of bounding cochains kind of cover the mirror space. Okay, that won't be precise because we'll do something much harder. Uh, you know, in a minute. Yes? I just have a general picture. It will be always exact story. I'm about to say something non exact and then I'll go back to exact story. Okay. Um, so these exact Lagrangians are the one we just talked about. Okay, so let's give this one a name. Let's call this L12. So there's L12, and then there's something called L1, and there's something called L2, and these are three to uh, are, are tori. Copies of T2 is exact Lagrangian T2, and this is the thing that we've been talking about. So you can, if you want to know what L1 and L2 are, you just do this construction, except you don't run into the singularities. So the picture you should have in mind is, one thing I can do is I can draw a circle like this, okay? And the other thing I can do is I can draw a circle like this. And if you want to make, want to make them exact, let's say this is L1, and this is L2. Okay? And then in addition, that's L12 over there. If you want to make them exact, Areas better match up, and I'm not going to discuss that. So anyway, so that's you do this. You compute. You check that when you patch together under these moduli, the c star squared and the c star squared, you get in each one of these pieces by Fleur theoretic equivalence. Essentially, as in Cho's talk, you get the mirror. Oh, except the point is missing. What's the point that's missing? This is the point that's missing. Okay. So that's why you need L12 for this. Uh, Yes. Sorry, which is the point that's missing? So you get the C star. So C two C two minus this has a cover by two copies of C star squared, but actually that cover misses the origin. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying the thing that corresponds to the origin is this immersed Lagrangian. And the C star squared charts are these two. So now let me talk about. So I'll say a few words about the hard proof which occurred before all of this, which is introduced in China. It was announced in 2009. I think by now I know how to prove it. So there's at least two people to claim to know how to prove it. Um, so, and then uses family flirt match.
So instead of having just these three Lagrangians, what you would do is you would say, I want to consider the family of Lagrangians which look like this. Okay? Family of Lagrangians look like this. This is a one parameter family, actually you need a two parameter family. You get a two parameter family by also moving in the five directions. Okay? The main warning I want to give. If you do this, you cannot consider just L12 by itself. You have to consider L12 equipped with bounding cochains. I mean, I think the expert in the rooms kind of know this because the same thing happens in one lower dimension already. But, but there's a big difference between what happens in the exact case, where you can just take these two charts and that small and just a point here. And what happens if you do family floor homology, where you have this, you know, this unitary local systems on these Lagrangians, but then you also have to understand what it means to have the unitary bounding cochain on the L12. So that, that changes the answer. So I'm not going to say more. So what I want to do, I want to do the same thing in higher dimensions. And I'm going to use this as my guiding picture. So in higher dimensions, Let's just, I mean, you can do this now. You know, the, whole, the point of the talk is you can do this. And, um, so I'll, I'll, say it at the, I'll say at the end what can be done. Um, so let's just start with, with n equals 3. And there, it's well known that there are four local models <coughs> that should appear when you do SYZ mirror symmetry. This goes back to gross. Four local models. One of them is C star cubed. One of them is C star cross this guy, x2. Okay. And the other one, let me call them just for today, I'll call them x3 and y3. I mean, it's better, I mean, there's better notation at the end. I will basically explain that. You know, this is parameterized by an integer, this is parameterized by an integer, there's actually family parameterized by a pair of integers, and then this is where you set one of them equal to zero, and this is where you set the other one equal to zero. So which one is the right? I'm about to write it. So this is uh, the set um, x1, x2, x3 not equal to 1 inside c3, and this is the set, let me just for now write uv, u1, u2, um, equals 1 plus y1 plus y2 inside c2 cross c star squared. This is called the conic bundle. Well, this is the conic bundle over c star squared with discriminants along the standard pair of heads. Okay? So the point is that x3 and y3 are mirror. If you are, you know, if you know a little bit about Gross's work, this is uh, this is like what he calls the plus singularity, and this is the minus singularity. That's because this has only characteristic one, and this has only characteristic minus one. So we want to do the same thing. So we want to, well, I mean, yeah, prove mirror symmetry. But really, it's better to not just prove mirror symmetry using the Raphakai category because that's easy. Uh, we want to have some more geometric approach, and the reason we want a more geometric approach is that it will work better once we start compactifying, just like in the last talk. Okay. So, are you using uh, medium difficulty or the hard difficulty? I will use medium difficulty. <laughs> uh, the hard one, yeah, the hard one well, will take more work. So, yeah. Um, okay, so let me, so, so, so the point is that um, x3 and y3 are mirror. And so, in fact, this is known, part of this is known, so maybe somebody will tell me that if I'm actually missing some. Uh, so in the rat case, So I have in my notes that Ueda, Homer Leano, and did I miss somebody? Oh, Chan. Okay, wrong order. 
10, uh, with a Pomerano weather, uh, computed the chi category. I'm just going to say the chi category of which one did you do? One, this one. one. That's right. Of y3 and prove the HMS. Now, I don't have anything in my notes about x3. I think somehow nobody's done it. Okay, good. So, in fact, so this has been, you know, with the whole we announced a long time ago something related, but actually something more complicated involving a potential. I don't want to talk about the potential. So maybe I just say, Groman, uh, this is kind of work in progress. Uh, the, 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 the same thing, computes f of x3. Uh, more generally, he does, you know, toric calabials, as you can guess. I mean, oh, you guys also did something more general here. Okay? So that's the wrapped version. So what I want to do instead is I want to talk about the medium difficulty proof. So what are, what are Lagrangians, which are mirror, which are skyscraper, skyscraper sheets of point, skyscraper of point, on the other side. Okay. So let's start. I want to start with the one that's actually harder, in part because I think people will find it more interesting. So I want to start with looking at the Fukai category of X3, looking at Lagrangians in X3. In X3. So in X3, we could try the same thing. X3 still has this projection, so let me just write it. Mapping my X1, X2, X3 to C, but of course it's C minus the point one. This is point one, here's the point the origin. Okay? And then you could say let's do this. Let's note that now the fiber is the locus where X1, X2, X3, general fiber equals lambda for lambda not equal to zero, and this is the same thing as c star squared. Inside c star squared, the only reasonable thing that you could, the only reasonable Lagrangian that you could, well, there's two reasonable Lagrangians you could try to parallel transport, you could try to take the zero section, or you could try to take a fiber. If you take a fiber, you get something non-compact. We're not trying to do something non-compact here. We're trying to find compact Lagrangians. So we should take the zero section. If you take the zero section, and you draw this picture, you see that here we have a double cone on the two torus. Bad singularity. Okay? So, the main idea is take two copies of this singular thing and do something to kind of get rid of the singularity while you still keep the geometry. So take two copies Actually, this two, if you count with multiplicity, it would be plus one or minus one um, And get rid of singularity while remembering enough geometry Okay, that's the vague idea how do we do it? By drawing some, by constructing some Lagrangian. Okay, so this is the picture. I still haven't decided on a name for this. I will again draw this picture. Okay, so we are going to take this two torus inside the fiber and we're going to move it around the base. Okay, so my notes, I can never decide how to start drawing this. Okay, let's do it like this. Hmm. Uh, which way does it go now? Better look at my notes. Yes, the big one. There we go. That is a circle, an immersed circle. Uh, what you should notice about it is that it looks just like this. Okay, I mean, if you ignore these guys, it looks just like that. So that's an indication, you know, it does something and then it cancels it. This has Maslow index zero. 
if you know that. Okay, so that's one thing. So it's an immersed three torus. So if I use it to parallel transport the two torus upstairs, it gives me an immersed three torus. And I want to give it a name, I want to call it L12. Okay. So I have this L12, and I want to have two other Lagrangians because I, I need a cover, and they still have L1 and L2, which are embedded three tori, and they look just like we had before, and we just draw them like this. Oh yeah, just like before. This one and this one. Oh yes. That's another thing to say. It has mass of zero. Also, if you make the area of this lobe be the same as the area of the other lobe, it's also exact. If areas cancel. Okay, so it's an exact immersed Lagrangian of mass of index zero. And then you also have these three tori with column L1. Okay, so now I can state the theorem. except that I just erased. Um, remember, this is the space X. We're working in X. That would explain. So, so the theorem says point Y, so U1, U2, I'm going to just do Y here. I just do Y1, Y2. Y is mirror to one. The local system on M1 if U1 is not zero to a local system on U2 if U2 is not zero. System. Well, <laughs> this is a, let me just not quite an item, an item potent sum end, a sum end of a local system on I one two if you want to equals you two equals. So what does this statement mean? A local system on L1 gives me an object of the Fukai category. That object of the Fukai category is mirrored by mirror symmetry to some object of the derived category of cohesion sheaves. Under the correspondence that we have, it goes to the category of sheaves of points of this nature, U1 not equal to 0. Similarly for these. Here, well, first, you have to make sure that this object has non zero floor homology. We'll come back to that in one second. But most importantly, the claim is if you equip it with the right local systems, then you will get points on the mirror which have which satisfy this property. U1 equals U2 U1 equals U2 equals zero. But actually, you won't get just that point. You will get that point direct some shift by one. Okay? And so you need in the Fukai category to get rid of the shift by one. That's what the sum end means. That O P direct sum O P. Okay, so these two are very easy to prove, especially if you've already proved uh, the wrapped versions, which I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to, uh, so let me just, I'm just, I'm not going to explain how to prove it, I'm just going to say, you know, the, the proof, the easiest proof I know, and you can do it by hand, but the easiest proof I know goes via um, constructing, you know, proving mirror symmetry HMS at the level of lab categories. Okay. And in particular, proving, as I was suggesting earlier, that this Lagrangian is non-compact this copy of R2, oh, this is the positive real locus. So this is the positive real locus. Show that 
the positive real locus in X2, um, X3. X3 generates and has an amorphism algebra. Algebra given by the ring of functions on the graph. If you try to think about how you would prove this, you'd realize that the fiber is T star T2. And when you do a rat Fukai category in T star T2, maybe, yeah, when you do a rat Fukai category in T star T2, that will give you, um, that will give you, um, uh, that will give you, well, by mirror symmetry, uh, Laurent polynomials in two variables. The question is, which of these two variables do you get Laurent polynomials in? Do you get Laurent polynomials in these guys? Okay, so let me just say, fiber gives C U one plus or minus Y two plus or minus. Okay, and then what about U one and U two? U one and U two they come from here. This is U one, powers of U one, and this is powers of U two. So uh, I said I refer to Groman, who's currently my postdoc. Uh, Groman likes to draw this picture as follows, which actually makes it in real. This is the singular fiber. This is zero. This is infinity. Okay. And then what I drew basically is some Lagrangian like this. And I told you that you know, this is u1 and this is u2. And now the relation u1 times u2 equals 1 plus y1 plus y2 is just some relation in the product when you do Fleur homology. If you try to multiply these guys by these guys, you end up counting sections. Okay? And those sections, there's three of them, and they count as y1 plus y2 plus y3. That's basically what happened. Uh, 1 plus y1 plus y2. Okay? That's... I mean, and somehow what I'm trying to suggest is actually trying to prove this. This is not very hard. So proving the wrap version is not very hard. We now have enough technology to just you know, do all the computations we need to do. So the reason this makes it much easier um, is that once you have this, if you want to tell whether some object goes to some, you know, scratch over sheet of point, you just think about Fleur homology with this guy, okay, and try to think of what is the module structure. So observe that L1 and L2 intersect the positive real locus at one point. Okay. Um, I mean, I think it's pretty clear. So this this guy here is moving in this direction. L1 and L2 are these circles. Let me draw it here to make it, oops, sorry, make it clear. So I see one intersection in the base. And in the fiber, what I have is T2 inside T star T2 and the cotangent fiber. And of course, these two meet at one point, so there's one intersection point over this. Okay, so that immediately implies that they go to Skyscraper for sheaves of points. And now you need to think about what is U1 and what is U2, but that's, that's a little bit more geometry. But I'm not going to do that. So the interesting thing is, what about L12? L12 meets a positive real locus at two points. Well, it depends exactly how you do it. I mean, of course, you know, now what does it mean to meet an immersive Lagrangian? Let me just do it like this. Okay. If I'd chosen things symmetrically, it would have gone through here, but of course, you know, when you count intersection points with immersive Lagrangians, you need to count them in the inverse image, not downstairs. So there is two intersections. So the question is, is the differential, what is the differential? That's all you have to, I mean, in some sense, that's all you have to check. So the differential counts disks like this. Let me just do it. L12, x2 with these two intersection points, uh, x2 plus, let's say the positive real locus, and we try to count these guys. And I will keep this picture 
So you stare and you stare and you stare and you think about where are the disks. And you realize that in this case, since we're trying to get a differential between these two guys, the only rigid disks only rigid disks project to this region. So they project to that region, how many are there? So if you want, to, if you're in a situation like this and you try to figure out how many are there, what you think about where do they lift? What do they lift to? So to think about where they lift to, everywhere here the vibration is smooth. The only place where it's not smooth is over there. So what's the singular fiber? So the singular fiber is uh, the coordinate hyperplanes. And then you do a small computation. If you were to work away from these things, if you were to work in this region, there would be a section. If you were to work in this region, there would be a section. If you were to work in this region, there would be a section. There is exactly three sections of the yellow bygone. And now, so how do they differ from each other? They differ from each other by their intersection with certain divisors. But now, if you think about H2 of the total space, you can detect H2 of the total space by H1 of the boundary. So the homology classes in the boundary differ by generators. If you pick one of them to be, if you just pick one of them to correspond to kind of the base point, fix one section of the base point, What you get is that the differential 1 plus y1 plus y2, what are these expressions y1 and y2 in my world here, where y1 and y2 are the holonomies of the C star local system? So we take this, as I said, um, a local system on this L12. So we take a local system on this on this um, immersive Lagrangian, uh, holonomies uh, okay, uh, of the C star uh, connection along the fiber. The fiber two torus. Okay, so there's th this is a three torus. There are two directions in the fiber and one direction in the base. In the base, you don't do anything, although. Actually, if you try to be very precise, you end up, depending exactly on which was the spin structure, you, you end up picking minus one as the holonomy of the base, but that has to do with curvature. I don't want to talk about that. But uh, the essential part is what's happening in the fiber, because these things, they all do the same thing in the base. And what happens in the fiber is they differ from each other by twisting in one of the, one of the two directions, and so you get this equation. What is the meaning of this equation? This equation tells you that, but keep this. So this equation tells you that the space of local systems on this three torus with non-zero Fleur homology space of local systems rank one C star on um, L12 with hf not equal to zero can be identified, I'm just going to say is the subset of c star squared given by the, that equation okay, let me just summarize, say something again, if you haven't thought about these things what I did here is this count of sections it can be thought of well, anyway, yeah. So that's it is this count of sections. This count of sections is basically counting the differential. Okay, this thing intersects this 
this inverse Lagrangian L12 intersect the positive real locus of two points. Okay? If this differential is non-zero, that means that the homology is, is zero. And because I started by saying, let's, you know, we can prove that this uh, positive real locus uh, generates the kind category, that implies that the self local homology is zero. You can prove that directly if you want to. But I don't want to prove that directly. It takes more. You have to compute more. This is much easier computation. This is the heart of the computation. So, uh, so then you get this. Okay, so this is exactly the equation of the discriminant. So the, this locus here, part three, if you look at the part of the mirror, y3, where, y, where u1 equals u2 equals zero, this is exactly uh, meds inside y3 as a set of points. With u1 equals u2. Okay. Any questions? So, uh, uh, this picture also, well, we consider this picture. Uh, okay. And, uh, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> yes. I drew this picture yeah. in Philadelphia. I drew this picture in Philadelphia at the opening conference. For this uh, collaboration, yeah, we will use it for constructing the inspect mode for it. Yeah. So anyway, so yes, I finally decided that it was time to not just draw the picture, but actually explain how the picture gives what you wanted to get. Okay. So um, so let's do the other side. Sorry, what do you mean by summit? What do you mean by summit? What do you, what do you do there? Okay. So if you see. If you do Fleur homology with this guy, it has rank 2. But it should have just rank 1. <coughs> so you could ask, what is this rank 2 thing? Is it just like, take a point and take a non-trivial extension, or is it a direct sum of two pieces? What is it as a module? It claims that as a module, it splits. But then the other, thing you could, the other way to think about it is that if you take this immersed Lagrangian, and you take the Fleur homology of this Lagrangian with itself, then it will have an element of Fleur cohomology that squares to itself. And then you can formally add that sum. This clicking is a special for this example, because otherwise you would expect some of the perverse shift of the similar function, which is what the selector comes to. Yeah, so you're saying, why is it that when you do this, there's actually a simple object? Yes, because mirror symmetry tells you on the other side you expect it just as cascade from the point. I mean, that, that's why it works. But yes, in general, you know, you take this random singular Lagrangian, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get this. Okay, let me talk about the other side. So on the other side, um, uh, on the other side, yes. So on the other side, uh, the construction is a little bit more complicated, but we don't have to take that input in some ways. So we, um, we, you, well, so how we we describe the symplectic topology. of the space y3, the space that I just wrote down, by using the S1 action that rotates u and v. u1 and u2. Okay? Let's say u1 positively and u2 negatively. It doesn't really matter. So if you do that, if you get a moment map, from y3 to r, okay, with exactly one singular value, and the um, reduced spaces are equivalent to C star squared for non singular values. Okay, so what do I mean by that? So what I'm trying to say is that this is, let me draw a picture. I'm trying to justify the picture I'm going to draw. So this is the base of the Grangian torus vibration on C star squared.
So what you can do is you can take this base and you want to extend it in one higher dimension via this moment map coordinates. But that extension is not trivial because there's exactly one value. This is the moment map for R action, for the S1 action. There's actually one value at which things are singular. If you try to think about the singularity, the singularity is exactly this uh, hypersurface. Okay. So the singularity looks like this. This pair of paths. So what we did in, with Uhu and Kazakov a long time ago was, so what we did is we said, well, we can construct a collection of embedded Lagrangians by doing the following thing. You project to the base, to this uh, R2 base. And when you project to the R2 base, you get a picture that looks like this. So this is what's called the amoeba of the hypersurface, but that's just basically the image of this hypersurface under the projections of two. And then there's these three regions here, where you know you're not in the, you're not in the discriminant locus. So these give me a Lagrangian tori. We have three Lagrangian tori. Let's call them L1, L2, and L3. There are three tori. How do I construct them? I start with a torus in this C star squared, starting with a torus in C star squared, and then lifting by the moment map. By the S1, um, basically by the S1 action. By the S1 fiber of the moment map. So there are these guys. So, the, so, so anyway, the theorem says that these Lagrangians, these Lagrangians, are mirror to skyscrapers of points on x3. Remember, x3 is the set of x1, x2, x3, not equal to 1, with two of the three coordinates not zero. Okay? So again, if you, just again to be precise, so x1 not equal to zero and x2 not equal to zero will correspond to a Lagrangian called L12. Okay? And then there's two more possibilities. So that's the easy thing. So then what remains is not, so this, by, by the way, this already covers, remember, x3, you know, when, if you look at the projection to zero, there was a singular fiber, and the singular fiber was the unit of the coordinate hyperplanes. We, already, we have both, already have the interior of the coordinate hyperplanes. What we're missing are the coordinate lines. Did I say that this is, I mean, this part here goes back to this. So, now, so we're missing coordinate lines. So, to get the coordinate lines, what you want to do is you want to start um, thinking about the pair of pants itself. So to get these, start with a Lagrangian I'm just giving it a different name, small l, inside the pair of pants. And what I want to assume, I want to assume that this Lagrangian here, that it bounds a, a, a Lagrangian, let me just call it um, T, 
which is a Lagrangian in um, in C star squared. Okay. And there are two key examples. First, if you start, let me do the easy one. If you start with this Lagrangian here, okay, if you start with a Lagrangian that kind of um, encircles one of the punctures. embedding in the cylinder locally. Flat embedding of T star S1 inside T star T2. Okay. I'm going to just draw the T2 part of it. Here's a T2. This is a Lagrangian T2 inside C star squared. And this circle here, which is part of my pair of pants, it just looks like this. And now comes the part where um, I haven't said anything. I haven't said anything wrong. I said that this guy should bound a, a, a Lagrangian inside the bigger space. But there's no way that this circle is going to bound inside C star squared. It's homologically essential. Okay? But two copies of it bound. So L direct sum L minus uh, uh, minus L, whatever that means, bounds the Lagrangian, uh, which is basically S1 times an interval. It's just the two torus split apart like that. How is that useful to us? The usefulness of it is that this is a Lagrangian in C star squared with a boundary on the discriminant locus. So, let's do what we said we should do here. Which is, we'll think of this picture as there's some kind of S1 vibration over this, except that the S1 vibration degenerates over the over the disk, over the over the over the discriminant locus. We can lift this S1 times S1 times I living inside um, Y3, except you can't quite lift it like that because this is the S1 fiber mod out by collapse the fiber, the S1 fiber, over the discriminant locus. Okay, if you do that, you get an immersed S1 times this. And if you think about how it is immersed, it's exactly this times S1 which is what you wanted to see. So the S2 part comes from the fact that if I were to take if I were to take this cylinder here and I were to collapse its boundary, it's not really this boundary, but anyway, it collapse its boundary, I would see exactly two points pinched together. That's roughly speaking where the S2 comes from. Except that the S1 is not this S1, it's the other S1, but it doesn't make a difference to describing the topology. Okay? And now I can say what I want to say is that these are mirror local systems on these things. There's exactly one choice of local, uh, one direction of local systems, like a C star worth of these. So the C star family of these objects are mirror to the coordinate hyperplanes, except not quite the coordinate hyperplanes. I'm sorry, the coordinate lines, except not the, co not, not the origin, okay, minus the origin, to coordinate lines 
um, uh, minus the origin. Okay. There's a C star family of these. There's a C star family of points on the coordinate line. Great. Uh, so this is not, I mean, I don't quite know what to say. Like, you know, we knew this when we wrote uh, the paper with Oboe and Tsarkov, uh, except I don't think we mentioned it anywhere in the paper. So now, the real thing, the last thing is, what about the origin? So we're missing the origin. Over here, I took two copies of that circle, should suggest to you what is supposed to happen. So if you take two copies of this, and two copies of this, and two copies of this, and if you, again, know something about this business, you know that these Lagrangians can be obtained by taking Seidel's immersed Lagrangian, except my areas are not correctly drawn. Okay? and doing an appropriate surgery. So Seidel's Lagrangian uh, triangle which is just an S1 immersed in, in the pair of hands bounds the Lagrangian disk in um, a bounds of Lagrangian disk in C star squared. Okay. So to prove this formally, the easiest way to do the easiest way to do it, so, so since this is immersed, the easiest thing to do actually is to try to pass to a cover where this is embedded. Okay? You can pass to such a cover that unbranched cover, where the branching branching there is at infinity. Branch and branch cover where it's embedded. You can actually pass in such a cover simultaneously for C star squared. That's very easy to do. Just write down a formula, um, and then in that thing, it's an, you know this is like a this this to a vanishing cycle, and that's a thimble of the vanishing cycle, and so that's a yeah that's a thimble for the vanishing cycle. So it's pretty straightforward construction. But if you just want to see it, if you want to see this, the easiest thing to do is to do tropical geometry <laughs> to see this. Use but maybe what I want to call like a phase direction of tropical geometry. This was very popular ten years ago. What do you say? Still popular. Still popular. Okay, good. Uh, and then what you will see is that uh, let's see if I can still remember how to do this. Yes. So the the hypersurface basically projects to this. Pair of pens. <coughs> so this is a pair of pants sitting inside the two torus, and you should give along half twists at the, where the corners are. Okay, so where does Seidel's Lagrangian live here? It lives here. It's this boundary. And this is the D2 that it wants. Okay? So you know, this is the right picture. To make it precise, you'd have to either fight with tropical geometry and degenerations to the things, or you just use this kind of trick that I suggest of passing to a cover. Okay, so what do we have? So now we have a D2 that bounds a Lagrangian. Uh, the D2 in C star squared, the Lagrangian, the Lagrangian the boundary lies under the discriminant locus. You apply the same construction. So the same construction as before. Yield uh, a D2 plus S1. Okay? Immersed now inside Y3, but it's not quite it because you need to mod out by the boundary. S1. You take the quotient by S1 uh, times a point over the boundary. But this space, I mean if you take a, if you take a two disk and you multiply by S1, and over the boundary you collapse the circle. This is messed up. Okay? So, um, great, so that's an S3. And that's an S3, it's immersed, 
let's think about the inter intersection points. The intersection points are, um, there is, well, <laughs> always, there are, uh, sideless thing has three intersection points, and that's the only thing you need. So this with three, with only thing you see, I mean, there's no new additional uh, intersection point with three self-intersections. So if you see that it has three self-intersections, you may ask, <coughs> well, what is the contribution to Fleur homology? Each of the self-intersections contributes two generators, okay, six generators of HF from the self-intersection. Plus two from the cohomology of S3. You have a rank eight. This is just in case you were skeptical. I'll say in a second why there's no differential. You get rank eight fuller homology, uh, which is exactly the exterior algebra on a rank three on the vector space of rank three. Ten of what? which is exactly the ring of functions on the mirror. Okay? So the geometry of this, you know, this thing behaves Fleur theoretically like a torus, even though it's an S3. But that's not surprising given the examples we have seen before. Uh, to prove that the Fleur homology is not zero, you just show that it intersects the positive real locus of work point. That's why you want to have generation. It intersects the, the zero section at one, the, the positive real locus at one point, therefore it has non-zero Fleur homology, Okay? Therefore, it's mirror to a point. Okay? Therefore, its rank of its, of, of its endomorphism algebra is 8. So there can be no differentials. Okay? Good. So I meant to discuss generalizations of this, so I'll just say one word. So you can generalize this to mirror symmetry between x, m, n, and x and m. What are these x and m's and x and n's? Where, where this, let's just do one of them. So this is given by the set of things satisfying the product of xi, i equals 1 to m, equals 1 plus the sum of ij, j goes from 0 to m. Sitting inside c to the m cross C star to the n plus one. Okay, it's the same technique. I mean, nothing really changes. You do this, follow the same procedure. You first find the positive real locus and show that it generates. So that will, because that will greatly simplify your life when you're doing computations. Once you've done that, I've basically given you all the ingredients to construct all the Lagrangians. You take, you know, in this direction, whatever that means. In this direction, you take uh, these. You know, Lagrangians, they're generalizations of sideless Lagrangians that um, Nick Sheridan used. Nick Sheridan used, they live inside the pair of pants. They bound by the same argument because you can pass to a cover where they become vanishing cycles and then they are thimbles that bound them. Um, and then it does what you do in this direction. In the other direction, this xi direction, oh, it's gone. You use this uh, something like this. So, okay, thank you. Introduce you. <laughs> uh, any questions? Is your sum n is representable by a Lagrangian or it is not? Well, so the, the point is that uh, that sum n is representable by the singular Lagrangian for which we don't know how to do Fleur homology. I don't want to do Fleur homology for the singular Lagrangian. I'd much rather study the sum n. You can try to prove that it's not representable by any immersed Lagrangians. It's kind of hard to see how you would do it. But, um, Situation where you do not have a family of You cannot apply this. You cannot apply this, yes. So I think there's a question of, so these, again, what I want to say, the reason I want to say this last thing here is that these are the families, up to taking quotients uh, and covers, these are the families that show up in the gross Siebert program. So if you think about the local singularities that show up in the gross Siebert's model for mirror symmetry, for toric things, for things with toric degenerations, then this is well, what you get. And so now for all of these things, we have Lagrangians, we have, you know, it's a little bit of a cheat to say that this is a, these are SYZ fibers, 
So for example, you could ask me, very reasonable to, I did the construction of an immersed S1 times S2. Uh, where did it go? Yes, immersed S1 times S2. So you could ask, how does this relate to an actual fiber? Well, it, it is the right type of being a fiber. But the way I constructed it, you know, I saved myself some trouble by not trying to construct it as a fiber. What can happen is you can deform this to a fiber. Okay. This one is even harder. This S3, I actually haven't quite thought about kind of how to make the whole space, to arrange the whole space so that this looks very close to a fiber. So that's, that's maybe one thing that's, that's not quite satisfactory with this construction. Any other questions or comments? Let's think.